Hello, everyone. Today, we are going to be creating custom entities and editing the form in the Dynamics platform, which is where all of the information for project for the web projects are stored. So here you can see I am in my uh, Dynamics platform. It shows me all of my projects, my, my, the projects module here. Um, but I'm going to need to go out to my Power Apps here to be able to edit the entities, um, edit the views, add fields. This is where I'm going to do the primary customization for the information that I can capture. So to get here, um, you go to make.powerapps.com and it should load you in directly here to that Power Apps homepage. As you can see down below, here are your apps. And if I click on my project app right here, here is where I get to this environment here. Um, but I'm going to come over to the left quick launch here and I'm going to click on data. And here is where I can add um, different entities. I can add different option sets. Here is where I add that and I can specify exactly which app or which module that I'm going to add that to. So I'm going to come up here to the, the view here um, and because, because the project app is not in the a default section. So I'm going to go ahead and click on all so that I can make sure I can find uh, the right module that I do want to edit here today. So I'm going to go ahead and click on project. And these are all of the entities that I have available to me in my project module. So some of these are um, organizational wide that are pulled in from the default ones, but this is specifically where I want to be able to come and add in the ones for project. So what we're going to do today is add in a, uh, a custom section in our form for project status. We're going to add in two different fields for that. We're going to have one that shows a schedule status. Is our project on track? Does it need monitoring? Or is it in the cannot recover state? And that's just going to be a user selected field with the different option sets behind it. And we're also going to add in a status summary multi-line text field as a way for the project manager to convey what is the current pro uh, status of my project? What happened last week? What's coming up this week? Just a way for them to convey. Um, because again, all of this information can be reported on that's stored in the Project for the Web App service. So we want to make sure that we put in information that's useful, easy for the user to navigate, and also for the viewers as well. So we're going to come up here. Again, I'm going to confirm I'm in my project section. I'm going to click on Add Fields. Um, the first field we're going to create is going to be that, that big text box for status summary. So I'm going to go ahead and name it status summary. Down below it here, this is the system generated name. You can see it has a prefix here and then it does name it with no spaces. So we're just going to leave that alone. Couldn't change it if I wanted to. I'm going to come down here to data type and I'm going to change this one to be text area because text is just a single line and text area does give you that nice big box to put in as much information as you'd, as you'd like. Well, it gives you, gives you some limits, but you have more information on what you can put in there. So once I'm done here, I'm going to go ahead and click done. And I'm going to scroll down to find my new field. Um, so you see here it is bolded. Um, and you do have this bar down at the bottom that tells you that this has not officially been saved to be used in this environment. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Save Entity. And now you do get the loading that it is officially saving the entity. I'm going to scroll down again now to find it just to confirm. So good. So it is now officially part of my environment. It does give you a couple of data points here. Um, what type of field it is, that the, it is a custom field that I have put in. Um, it's not required, which is this middle option here. So the second field we're going to add is one called schedule status. And here is where we're going to create an option set that we can choose from. Um, so before we can create our new fields here, we need to add the option set first. That way, when we add the new field, we have that option set to choose from. So we're going to click on option sets. We're going to click on new option set up here. And again, here, we're just going to go ahead and name it schedule status. Again, down here below, it does give you that uh, system generated name. And here's where we're going to put our options. So we're going to put our first option is on track. Our second option is needs monitoring. And then our last option here is cannot recover. So once you have your different items set here, we're going to go ahead and click on save. And this one just saves immediately. It doesn't need, doesn't have that bar down at the bottom that you need to click on again. So I'm going to come down and find my field just to make sure it is set up the way I intended it to. And you can click here. You can see it does open up that panel again on the right. So if you come back and you decide you need to add another value, um, maybe not applicable, you need to add a fourth different option that you want to convey to management, you can just uh, click on add new item right here and it will change your option set dynamically. 
I'm going to go ahead and click cancel. So now I'm going to come back to entities over here so that I can add my new fields with that option set as my data type. And so again, it does bring me to my default view here. I need to change that specifically for project since that is where I want to add in my new field. Come down here, here's project. So now I have, again, all of my options up here. So I'm in my field section. I'm going to click on add fields and we're going to add our field to be called status summary. Again, our system generated name and the data type section down here is where we are going to specify it's not a single line text field. It is going to be chosen from a list of values. And um, so the option set is almost all the way down at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and click on option set right there. And once you do that, it populates another box underneath it where you can specify exactly which option set you're going to choose from. So up here again, if you wanted to choose do it directly from here, you can create your new option set here. Um, since we did already create ours, I'm going to go ahead and just scroll down and find schedule status. Here is where I can um, edit my option set if I'd like to. And I'm going to set a default value of on track. I'm going to say that when new projects are created, they're going to be on track. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that as on track here. I am going to make this a required field. And um, since I do want to make sure that all of my projects have a what is the scheduled status. So when I do report, it's going to be populated for all of my different projects. So I'll go ahead and click done. And again, down here, you have the second bar. If you scroll down, it is bolded, which means those change our changes are pending and not yet saved. So I'm going to go ahead and click save entity down at the bottom. So now that we've created our new fields, we're ready to update our form to pull those fields in. So I'm going to click on my forms tab. And since we do only have one form in our projects module by default, it makes it easy choice for us. I'm going to go ahead and choose that one there. And it will load the form that we have currently selected. So if we go to our projects um, right now, you can see in our current form, it does mirror that exactly all of those fields are there. I'm going to come over here. So we are going to add in a new section. We have one for general, one for estimates, one for actuals, and having our project status fields doesn't really apply to any of those. So we're going to add in a brand new section. I'm going to go ahead and click in the middle here because this is where I would like to add it. Up here in my top ribbon, I'm going to click on add component. And then my layout here, I'm going to click, I'm going to have a one section, new section, a one column section. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop it above my estimates over here. Let's go ahead and add our estimates over by our actual. So we'll add this as our, our nice um, status section here. So off on the right, there is the panel for your display options for whatever you do have selected. So I'm going to go ahead and have it here so you can see those options change. So for our new section here, we are going to call it project status. And so we're going we're to go ahead and leave our name here. Uh, down below at Unique. And here are some other data points that you can update. You can add different sections where you do hide that label, which is the project status identifier. Uh, you can lock the section, you can hide the section, and we'll go over these options in, in one of the following videos that we are going to do in for project for the web. And down here is where you can update the number of columns if you do need to change it from what you previously selected. So I am going to actually take my project status field here and I am going to put it in to my project status section. I'm just going to say it makes more sense for it to be here so I can go ahead and select it. And when you do select on the fields, again, it populates with different options. So if you want to hide the label, make this field read only um, or lock it or hide it, you can do that field by field here. So I'm going to click underneath it and I'm going to switch back up in the ribbon to my add fields because um, we have, have those two fields, the schedule status and the summary, the status summary fields that we're going to be adding in here. So you can scroll down here. Um, my checkbox is checked right here. So it's going to show me only the fields in my project module that are not being used. If I uncheck it, it will show me all of those fields. Um, checking that box just makes it a little bit easier to navigate. So I'm going to scroll down until I find my schedule status. So I'm going to drag it right in here until it comes in my project status section. So you can see a project status, schedule status. So we're going to look for our status summary. So we do see it right there. And we can also use our search box here. So if we need to find one of them that says status, it just narrows down your results down here. We're going to pull it over here. All right. So once that is set, we are going to, if you want to save it, um, and not quite published it yet, you can choose a save option or you can go ahead and click on publish, which will do both actions in one. So we're gonna go ahead and publish our new form here, new look and feel. 
So once that's done, we're going to go ahead and click our back button, which will take us to, uh, we want to go to our home page here. That way we can update one of the projects that we have existing already in our um, project section here. So I'm going to click on my project management project. And you can see that we have a new layout now. Um, as soon as you click save, it will take place retroactively for all of the projects that are using this, this form. So now that we have it here, um, and you notice there's, there's no open for editing or anything like that. Everything is, once you click on it, available for you to, to choose right here. So I'm going to leave that as active. I'm going to say that this one is, um, needs monitoring. And then here is where I can edit. Um, this project needs to be reviewed for resource loading issues. So I'll go ahead and click off of that here. And so this does save. Um, and we'll go ahead and click a save button down there to save my changes. I'm going to come out here to my project section, go in here again to view just to make sure it did save all of my changes here. And it did. Excellent. Um, so that is how you add new fields and update your form to incorporate those new fields in the project for the web platform. And we will be doing a video on how to create different issues and risks list coming up. So stay tuned.